Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. This is the second game of the final of the Masters Cup. So, because it's double a limb, when the loser's bracket winner comes through and faces the winner's bracket winner, then we have a best of three. And if the loser's bracket <laughs> finalist wins that then we go to another best of three because it's double the limb so this is the first best of three and this is the second game we already saw the first game which was on also the west wetlands here we're on a much more classic map crossfire canal 20 by 20 much better known as pizza for obvious reasons it's a greasy pizza though, very soggy, quite disgusting. Bloodier is here playing under obfuscation. And his first two engineers going to the hydrocarbon. He's made factory, a couple of P gens. Gonna make three mexes, I guess. Oh, he's gonna make all the mexes, okay. With his ACU. Ajax has gone first air. First two engineers are moving to the hydrocarbon. Looks like he made three power generators and now and then is making all of the mechs with his ACU. And I think he's obviously going to throw up another air factory in here with nice adjacency. You can see Bloodir getting adjacency with all of his T1P gens on his factory. And actually sending three engineers to the hydrocarbon. And then you can see there's orders given. Now one thing you probably should do, grab this, this reclaim here. This reclaim here is pretty good. Maybe he thinks he doesn't need it at that specific time. But uh, I think it's decent to grab it. And already an air scout over at Blood Ears base. So right now he should be... His mind will be wondering what uh, what's going on here. Is there a bomber coming? So he's probably going to be immediately trying to rush an interceptor, surely. Seeing as there is this scout overhead. And he is going for a first inti. And he's not making any anti-air, so he's calling the bluff here of Ajax. Not expecting a bomber to come to his base. Ajax definitely wouldn't have minded uh, an anti-air coming out there. Because he is not going for a bomber. He just wants the intel and he's going to rush his transport very quickly. And now prepares the engineers. You can see he moves the engineers away from factories. Nowhere near the commander. And still he, the transport could have gotten him in trouble if the engineers start bumping into that mechs. But definitely with, with transports like that, especially the Seraphim transport, stay away from the commander with your engineers it will not go well for you <laughs> they will just bump forever Bloodir not making adjacency his base is going could could look quite ugly <laughs> in the near future and he's quickly dropping he made one inti scout transport so Pretty much called Ajax bluff there. I mean, he had an air scout over his head, made one anti, and then went for transport. If Ajax had gone for a bomber, maybe could have been interesting. But really, I think Ajax was just hoping for some maybe overreaction from Bloodier, or and simply also just wanted the the intel that the scout was giving him. So. The engineers spread out. He drops four here, one here to grab a mix. He's going to build a factory, send the engineers to reclaim. There's a lot of reclaim on this map. And he's thrown up two factories here, radar after building the mexes. Vladir throws up a factory before the mexes. Well, he's being a bit careful. And also, he dropped all the engineers in the one spot. So, slightly slower expansion for him. On this island now he picks up four more engineers 
and is heading to his other pizza slice. Looks like Ajax is not going to drop aggressively. He's just going to take his side of the map. Bloodier is going to take his side of the map and we will proceed from there. Ajax continues adding power in his base in a nice grid. I always like this this uh, template. It's very good because of course you fit a factory right in the middle there. The pigeons aren't right next to each other so they don't damage each other when they explode and also you can control K the whole template and not lose any mass by uh, the explosion damaging the wrecks. So there's the drop. Mechs is going to be built, a couple of mechs will be built and a factory and then you can see all the engineers spread and expand and he will eventually add, add a couple more factories as well immediately oh look at that T2 land one quarter of the way done no assistance on it doesn't really have the build power to assist it he's just gonna needs to expand with his engineers rather than assist this so he starts it very quickly and it will take about two minutes to upgrade you can see here two minutes ten seconds and already the other factory is spamming the Zooey's across to be annoying against Bloodier. Now we have Bloodier sending his air across. Now what has he targeted here? Has he targeted something? It looks like they're all heading for a specific target. Maybe Ajax's interceptors. Maybe he's seen them and has seen that he has superior numbers. Feels that he will have superior numbers. So he flies straight past an inti of... Ajux and yes he is look he's targeted one of these and yeah this is the one so the rest of them split in every direction and one of them gets in behind does decent damage as well got a couple of kills there actually with that inti and saved the rest so nice play there and now he's going to use his transport to expand a little faster on his slices the Zooey's make landfall. Mex goes down. Radar goes down. Engineer goes down. And we're already doing damage. So units dispatched. And it's gonna be it's gonna require a decent amount of APM for for Blood Air to actually counter these Zooey's for now, but he's already started producing frigates. Nice assistance on this factory, and I think these frigates are going to head straight over here and stop this annoying Zooey spam. But as he does that, he's going to have to deal with the left side now. Zooey's about to move across, and there are no tanks here, and only a single factory, and that's not ideal. You don't want a single factory. Looks like Blood Air, I think I just heard a an air fight, and Blood Air has killed some things there with his inties maybe just an inti or two of Ajax who is immediately he has uh, started throwing up anti-air and is making a now T2P gen in his expansion now the T2 land is completed so we gotta expect I think some Yenzines and hover flak in the not too distant future Ajax now scouts and sees the naval production, so we'd probably also see a move to navy. Not a bad idea to use some of these engineers and pick them up and drop them so you can more quickly get some naval production. And also, this is another thing to uh, look at. You see these rocks here. At least walking an engineer to them is quite good. And also, you can drop there. Now we have a lot of Zooey's appearing, but. Oh, they're not Mantis, they're actually Hunters sent to deal with them, which is quite good. They're faster, cheaper, have good damage, and they're going to have an easier time dodging in most cases, but that time they got obliterated, and actually they're not doing a good job killing these, these Zooey's, to be honest. And he's made quite a lot of Hunters. Still, the Zooey's get past. 
But eventually they're killed. Probably better to use Mantis. Or Bombers. But now that he has Frigates over here. The Zui spam. You can see it's already sp stopped. He knows that there's Frigates coming. There's Frigates already there. And it would be a waste of mass to uh, invest in a lot more Zuis. Now maybe when he gets a decent number of Yenzines. And Hover Flak. Then Zuis with them. Can amplify that force. And be quite useful. But on their own. They are extremely vulnerable to frigates especially and cyber frigates are the best in the business cheap high health mostly it's uh, the fact that they have such a low cost for what they do T2 land begins for Blood Deer. He already has T2 Air, but I haven't seen any T2 Air units except... Oh, well, here we go. Nice AoE gunships here. Killing the Zooies that do make a past the beach. Yeah, look, there's just Zooies just in random places. Blood Deer actually reclaims that. I don't know if these were on attack move or... I don't think he manually reclaimed that. And now we have bombers moving in for Blood Deer as well, trying to do a bit of damage. And look at that, they're actually doing nice damage. Not bad. They're going to have to get a few passes. And what happened here, actually? Why are all of these mechs dead? Did Zooey's really do that? That looks like... Hmm. Well, either way, we have T2 land and Wagner, so the Zui Cancer will be repaid with some Wagners, and they're going to be really annoying to deal with. Going underwater, meaning they can't be killed by frigates, cannot be stopped, unlike the Enzines are also uh, stoppable by frigates, and he's going to need more than a couple. You can see over here the Enzines completely surrounded a couple of frigates and quickly dealt with them. And now they're going to move across. Now there is no floating flag with them yet. Here's one here. But it's quite far behind. So maybe the gunships will actually deal with the Yenzines that are moving in. The first pretty decently sized group here. And on the other side, similar story actually. Mixture of frigates and gunships dealing with this amphibious assault. Flak slightly behind. Ajax has made T2 on his commander. I wonder what is the plan with that. Or is it just safety first or just just it's nice to have T2 in your commander. And it certainly is nice to have T2 in your commander. It's not a an unreasonable uh, reason. Not an unreasonable reason. Of course that <laughs> makes a lot of sense. The Enzine getting wrecked. Frigates faster, more health, more damage. Well, actually, do they have more damage DPS? Yeah, surely. Three T2P gens now, and a TMD gone up. No maxes in this expansion here, but we do have T2 maxes here, and there's no protection, no TML protection, or TMD. <laughs> TML protection. No TMD. Bladir only seems to have two T2P gens. And actually, he's gone T2 Navy. That is what he's moved to. And actually, okay. Making frigates out of that factory now. He has a destroyer. Now, that flak was about to do brutal damage, but uh, got killed by uh, this frigate here. But you can see there's, the rating has done something, but mostly it's been stopped. And here we can see some basically mass dumps. This PD did a massive amount of damage. So overall, the Enzines, the T2 Amphibious Assault has not been that successful thanks to gunships and frigates being in the right place. And now we have T2 Navy. And some 
quite a bit of T1 production in the Navy from Ajax. Comes later, but there's a lot more of it. Look, there's only three factories here. Some assistance, certainly. But overall, far more T1 production. And now this assault actually on the left may get through, and we can see that Yenzi's are being supported by ho two hover flak and Zui's, and Zui's can quickly take out many defenses, and the Yenzi's can move across and start raiding, and this could potentially do some damage now, certainly more than on the right side, look at this. This PD is actually so perfectly placed, honestly. Kills everything that comes anywhere in this side, it can't sneak up here, really. This guy's taking damage, and he will die after killing just a couple of cheap structures on the left Mantis and actually Wagner's are enrolled enlisted in defense and they actually will be should be successful decent production quite a few land factories another support factory coming up and the gunships maybe don't need to be sent in here against flak it's sort of a waste Unfortunate, honestly. Just kind of wasted the uh, the gunships, but the attack. Well, can he actually? If he target fires, he can take down a couple of mexes, at least one, I would say, and maybe more because Blood Ear is not reacting. On the other side, you can see Wagner is getting in nice raids. We're going to aim for this T2 Max now. This one is very vulnerable as well. We don't have any PDs to defend. And you can see they're going up now. They're planned. But maybe a bit too late. And the Navy looks good for Blood Ear. We missed a naval fight, I think. Although I think maybe Ajax mostly retreated here, did he? I don't really see the many dead frigate wrecks. There are a few. But overall, he can't really fight versus frigates and this destroyer so he has moved to t2 navy himself on this side we did see just one t2 max go down and that's not really sufficient when you see all of the mass that has been deposited on blood Deer's doorstep overall not effective attacks here on this side it has to be said this destroyer hasn't done too badly maybe missed a trick here not sending the Wagners to this mass extractor but there's more incoming and actually they can take out this T2 support factory which would be painful you can see going down very quickly the unit inside will die with the factory oh some units come into range and units prioritize units so the factory is left alive that's a bit of a mistake there again just a slight one could have done very nicely to kill this support factory and he will in the end get to this T2 Max so superior damage for for Blood Deer and right now it looks looks like Blood Deer's attacks are more effective and Ajax's attacks are leaving uh, leaving some mass for for Blood Deer to collect and he has collected a lot of the mass here. Missed a bit though. And that... <laughs> here's a drop. It has been forgot about I think. Now gunships enlisted. Nice. And that will leave some mass but you can see the max points have been empty for quite a while. And the mechs that have been killed have been T2. So I'm just going to have to gather. And look at this. The, <laughs> the Wagners using their amphibious nature. Escape the gunships. And actually can just move across to the next island. Try to do some damage there. The gunships move, move on to other targets. And the middle is controlled now, thanks to the T2 Navy, by Blood Ear. He only has one destroyer. Does he really only have one? Did he lose a destro, or did he simply 
only make one. Well, that's kind of interesting. That he only invested in one destroyer, and the rest of the time his factory has been making frigates then, I guess. Now, maybe that's a mistake, or maybe it's intentional. I'm not sure, to be honest. Maybe he wanted more frigates to make sure there'd be no more Yenzines. Oh, it looks like we have a drop here. The transport dies, but the Mantis land and kill <laughs> several of the Inties that uh, nearly dropped the Mantis out of the sky. These gunships have to be very active to catch all of these uh, Mantis and and Wagners. Nice drop here, and he's going to reclaim that mass that has been left. And there's some mass here for him to grab. These PDs are going to make mince meat, I think. And especially with the engineers there to take some shots, that helps actually quite a bit. But the Wagners are going to get past. Some of them will get past. Maybe these ones will even finish off the PDs that are left. Wagners are not too bad at dealing with PD. Once they can see them. Another drop here. And that's a T2Max going to go down to some mantis or is that the, is that the same drop hmm I think it might be the same drop actually and the gunships chased by Ajax's air and overall it still has to be said bloodier doing the damage and it, you can see his side very little done to him but in the Navy Low is trying to cheat. <laughs> In the Navy, oh, this could potentially be some good damage. Already, these gunships have done decent damage, killing the Wagners and such. And now they move on to T2 Maxes. There's no anti air here. And one goes down. The Indies now are dispatched. And the Navy, we have five destroyers. Five Seraphim destroyers for Ajax. And. Mm, not good micro from Bloodier. A bit of a mistake there. Went in far too deep. And he may just get destroyed. Ajax should chase this down. And kill everything here. Because the cruiser is here. Two destroyers. The gunships are kind of being wasted now. Honestly, with the. With the cruiser here. I think he could kill everything with these destroyers and frigates. And he needs to grab as much of this mass he can as fast as he can. Now a massive assault. So many Wagners here. And actually these Wagners got taken out before they killed anything. They came across and we had more Wagners here. But this assault here is very large. 22 Wagners, 6,500 mass. And this is the kind of force that could potentially just run up into the core and kill everything. Now, there hasn't been a scout put sent ahead of this. There's no scouting overhead for the Wagners, and that's a problem. And simultaneously, an attack on the right side by Ajux. But, oh, it looks like his flak fell behind. And the gunships did decent damage before the flak came in. Now... So many of these Wagners running straight into the main base. And there's no defenses here. Gunships are sent across. Over here we have a a Wagner. It's focusing on a T2 PD. So maybe it will die to the ends. And this T2 Mex goes down to a couple of Wagners. Now what, are, what should these Wagners do right now? I think... Well, I think if they just move around they'll kill pretty much everything. Should definitely at least target down the T2 Maxes I feel like. Rather than fight the army which is what will happen if he doesn't target fire. But the gunships are going to clean it up quite quickly. And Ajax has pushed his navy all the way back to Bloodier's production forcing him to make T2 and T1 Torp defense. And now Ajax decides that uh, maybe that's far enough. And he has left some reclaim here. 
maybe he overextended there and still we have uh, Destro and Cruiser Rex in the water that haven't quite been grabbed yet this attack on the right side continues the flak another one flak goes down now there's one behind but it's gonna get taken out by this army that's incoming and that was a uh, was that the HQ that was the T2 land HQ I think it was it, it must have been with that much mass there takes that out not a bad kill somehow doesn't kill this T2 max here and this Yenzine is going to run away and try and be annoying elsewhere so bloodier saves his navy you can see he had to invest in a lot of torp defense here and t2 torp defense you can see he's backing out of those doesn't need them anymore but he has uh, he has regained some level of of navy and Ajax actually treated all the way back you retreated really far and maybe that is a mistake we have 10 destroyers now 10 destroyers versus 6 well, the sixth one just came out of the factory. Six and only seven frigates. Twenty-three frigates for Ajux, and I think we need some cruisers added ASAP. He has a lot of navy. With missile cruisers, he can do significant damage. You can see no TMD here. Now there is T2, but we don't see any T2 engineers. And I think it's time to make those, make that navy count, make the Seraphim navy count, and those missile cruisers, something that Cybern does not have at its disposal. But both players now seem to be thinking T3 air. Actually, no, Ajax is not thinking T3 air. I don't know. Oh, I think we, I've missed a uh, Corsair snipe on the power. Those look like dead Corsairs that's a dead P gen I don't know how much was lost he may have rebuilt on top of these get a feeling he lost more than one P gen there see this <laughs> playing on a map like this very very tricky here's a TML has 650 damage killed mass killed uh, not sure what I killed though That mix needs to be rebuilt. <laughs> Oops. And there's a lot of mass here actually. Quite a lot. Those those Corsairs are not cheap. 420 mass. And Ajux now. Oh my goodness. He has so many gunships. These are Seraphim gunships. So more expensive than other T2 gunships. And... I don't think he was ready at all for that many ASF and they're going to melt the gunship so quickly and there's no cruisers here Ajax is committing hardcore to this push and maybe his formation is not that great Bloodier in this small area had all of his Destros pointing forward shooting for a long time now this Destro gets completely caught out and will go down but with all of this ASF, Bloodier has now killed so many gunships. I mean, the cost of those things, that was a brutal loss of, of air. And now he can put all of, his air, all of this air production into torp bombers. And surely, and look, Ajax is already running. He's already bailing out on this attack, it seems. He knows that there's there's nothing he can do versus all these tar bombers and he won't be able to kill all of this get rid of it uh, before the tar bombers do enough damage to swing the battle and he's forced to retreat and that is a, that is a brutal loss there very very nasty for Ajax he was just not ready for this many ASF and it cost him big there 
a lot of mass left on the table. Look at all of this here. Got about 12k. And still these these uh, T2 wrecks that he... That important victory he got earlier on. He did not get the mass from that. And uh, that's a bit of a mistake. Only now the cruiser comes out. A lot of anti are now going up in the expansions. He knows that it is going to be a problem for a while at least. He's only now making his T3P gen <laughs> with perfect adjacency around <laughs> surrounded by T1 P gens. Of course that's not adjacency, but you put it where you can fit it. And a T3P gen is the same size as a factory, so it fits right in there. Tianzin is in a struggle with an immovable object as it burns. Not a good fight for him. Bladir now getting the juicy Rex, some of them Seraphim, some of them Cybrant. It's all mass to him. Now T3 Mex is actually let's let's take a look here because Ajax has two T3 Mexes right now, two T3 Mexes. I don't know if Bloodier has any. This is very low eco in comparison. Look at this, 147 to 207, and Bloodier has about five and a half thousand mass. It's definitely time to make that T3 Mex quite quickly. His ACU is over here with stealth and T2 hiding under the water. He's going to be quite safe and now Bladir is making up ground with his navy pushing out and maybe he... Ooh! We lost more... Oh that must have been from the torp bombers actually. Not from the destroyers. Was that a frigate that just died there? Or something more valuable? Oh, just a frigate dying to a, a cruiser. Oh, we have a drop of Arties and a T2 Max goes down before they do. Not the worst drop ever. The T2 transport survived as well. That is it quite a large army that's uh, gathering on the shores and actually here's another couple of dangerous units two whalers and now the air moving across to cover them what is going to be able to stop them oh these lines of AA really nasty in a in a, just not in the, a good place really Whalers can easily go around. They're not going to come anywhere near this. Now this attack here. The Enzines trying to first shoot through the walls. That's going to take a little bit of time. And in the meantime. Bloodier sends his Arties up onto the cliff. Out of range of. Well not, not out of range of the Zooies. But out of range of uh, the Enzines. And now the Enzines try and push in through the small gaps they've created in the walls. But there's four T1 PDs behind the walls supported by mantis a couple of wagners flak and this is a meat grinder pure meat grinder a slaughter the entire army is defeated the attack fails very few units left remaining now the pds have gone down there's three flax, a Yenzine, and some Zooies. And there's nothing really to be done. Maybe this T2 Max will go down at a stretch. Over here, the Whaler. Oh, did he take out a Whaler? Where is the second one? That's probably a dead Whaler. <laughs> Not sure how that died. Maybe these flax over here. Oh yeah, they have 
decent damage on them. I think it was those flex. Took out one of the whalers. He comes over here. Takes out a T2 mechs. Over here, another dead T2 mechs. And maybe more to come. A huge wing of Torp Bombers now heading towards Ajax Navy. And maybe a bit prematurely, Bloodier sending in his navy he should wait until the Torp Bombers do what they will. Losing a couple of Salem's at the front here. But the volume of torpedo bombers is huge. And Ajax really so far behind on air for a long time. Still way behind. I don't know where that whaler has gone. Oh, here he is. Still alive. I think it's the same one. Good to keep those things alive. You definitely don't want it. Send those in. When you don't need to. And there's a lack of flak. There's actually no flak here. And that is... Oh, that's unfortunate, really. Well, unfortunate and a mistake, I think. Some, uh... Some flak in there would be really nice. Because floating flak does not die to torp bombers. Unlike the cruisers and... Now we're down to just four destroyers. Many, many ships died in that... That attack. Look at all of these dead ships. And in terms of eco... Blood Ear... Up to 181 and... Ajax around where he was already. 212, slightly more, but more or less the same. He's had to replace some mexes. He's lost some. Still has mass on his side. And there's a lot of mass in the water still to be gotten. Which maybe both players are, are slow to, to take. The Salem's taking nice shots oh the rally point for the factory is in the wrong place and this destro this cruiser is wasted need to see this uh, rally point get adjusted the Salem shooting from outer range are gonna do really a lot of work Ajax falls back further it does have a lot of of hover here quite a lot 20 hover tanks, well, hmm. Guess it's not as much as I thought it might have might have been. But we and we have 40 zooies as well. And I think this is the time. He's gonna go for it, but he only has four destroyers. Needs to get those in range quickly. And as he starts to move, the torp bombers appear. Now let's look at the air fight. Let's see. 21 ASF. 23 so the air fight is incoming oh blood Deer wants it see he, he's going for he took out a t1 transport there i don't know why he sent all his asf after that I, maybe he was he was actually sending him in to try and win the air fight but he did not win that air fight by any stretch of the imagination completely annihilated for almost no losses by blood Deer. that transport whether he specifically targeted that transport which it looked like he did or if it was just what the ASF attacked I think that actually ruined his air fight there and now we do have a lot of floating flag there kind of late but they are there and still the torp bombers are alive but they are all going to die and they're all going to die right next to Ajax, you can see the ASF Rex here are going to provide some decent mass for him and it looks like he will be able to push back with hover mainly because he has almost no navy left we need to see, yes he's gone straight back to destroyers no more cruisers for now it, he needs to, if he can keep these cruisers alive push back with destroyers and maybe even some of his own torp bombers there's still mass to be gotten, a lot of mass in the water here for him to use and uh, he could potentially push this back and uh, do some good work. Get some mass. I think reclaiming some of these might be good, honestly. You really don't want to make massive lines of anti-air like this. Let's see how much it costs. 
Five and a half K mass. That's that's pretty huge. And this whaler gets killed finally. It's not allowed to survive and be annoying. Oh yep. He just picked those up there. I think he dropped them and then picked them up again. Not sure what the purpose of that was. Maybe he was scared that the air was coming for it, so if he drops them then he's gonna save the mantis, that might be it. The naval fight continues. There's just so many destroyers. It's really just a, a gigantic number of destroyers right now in comparison to what Ajax has because Ajax has been decimated by those tor bombers. He has two destroyers. He lost so many destros simply to torpedo bombers and that's leaving him unable to compete in Navy. 12 destros. And of course, frigates supporting, cruisers coming out. And actually we have T3 land from Bloodier now. He has replaced that uh, factory that was lost to the Enzines and Zooey's over here. And here come the, <laughs> the Mantis, T1, well T2 drops. Two of them land, one fails to... Uh, Unload its cargo and actually one of the transports lives as well. And he is going to take out at least one mechs and some storages. And maybe killing some of this anti air would actually do Ajax a favor. Oh, please don't walk past the mechs. Don't walk past the mechs. What are you even here for if you walk past the mechs? Is this a scouting, scouting mission, perhaps? Bombers coming out now. And actually the bombers may just kill all the engineers around this, <laughs> around the T3 air factory. That would be quite nasty. Reclaim coming up. The bombers are doing some friendly fire. But overall there's more important things happening. Still 12 destroyers and look how he just creeps forwards. Keeps the frigates close. Has a very nice, has a nice formation, so a lot of these destros can attack and just creeps forward. Never allow the opponent to get in and surround him. Mantis have been cleaned up. They were suitably annoying, honestly. They did nice work in that that regard. Four T3 Maxes for Bloodier in his main base. I think that will be all he has at the minute. Yes, but certainly that's caught him up more or less. We have five T3 Maxes for Ajax. He's slightly ahead, but 20 mass ahead. But what does 20 mass mean when you have two destroyers versus 12? I'd certainly take the the big naval advantage over his slight eco advantage at this stage. And Ajax continues to eco. Another T3 Max coming up. He is, I think, he's not careful enough with some of the reclaim. One of the reasons this mod is so useful that makes the bigger targets, uh, well, the more valuable reclaim, um, more visible to you. It's very useful to catch those big wrecks and guide your attention towards things that deserve them. Now that we have a brick drop here. It's already taken out T2 Max, and he can retreat to the water. <laughs> that could be one actually way of using the bricks is come up with the navy and try walk onto land or at least just hide in the water until you're useful again until their T2 Max has been rebuilt and then come back out. Where are the other bricks? Because he has made quite a few bricks and I don't really see him using too many on his opponent's side. Well, he has three over here that have walked. Have they walked the whole way? Doesn't have any support factory here, so it seems the answer is yes. But they're still microing back and forth. Engineers on the front line taking a lot of destroyer wrecks that are here. Look at this. Many 
dutiful servants working for the cyber nation he's going t3 navy now uh, that is very unusual for a 1v1 game very unusual so he's going for t3 navy now that's how he wants to proceed and we'll see if that's going to be worth it for him t3 navy not a cheap upgrade and the, the battleships aren't cheap either 8k mass so a little under four uh, destroyers somewhere between three and four destroyers and this most significant thing is uh, well they have a lot of health and they have longer range a lot longer range than destroyers and so maybe he can actually do some bombardment of some of these expansions certainly mechs like these can be attacked maybe the main base can be attacked by a cyber battleship I'm it's gonna be close though now this all of this amphibious stuff all this hover it's mostly flak and he just turned sideways and cleaned up a lot of it you can see many wrecks here and Bladir's domination of the Navy has been very very good for him the assaults of uh, Ajax this assault here damn that, well, that was a really nasty one Bladir had such a good defense set up and got so much from reclaim from that let's see the reclaim Ajax still has more reclaim in fact 101k but they're almost dead even in most aspects they're very close but overall Ajax has over 50,000 more total mass and that is quite amazing and what that tells us that he has been rebuilding mexes that's another reason he actually has uh, has about the same reclaim as blood Ear would be because he is reclaiming those dead t2 mexes that he has lost so overall i would say certainly blood Ear has more reclaim in terms of more more useful reclaim <laughs> See if you took out the his own dead stuff that he's reclaimed, his own dead economy that he's reclaimed and had to replace, then I think the reclaim numbers would look a lot more favorable for Blood Ear. Oh now this hover comes back with a vengeance and the navy has to run away. You can see the navy is faster and can run away. And he's gonna group back up with this significant naval force and you can see blood Ear has simply just not lost a lot of these destroyers I mean the damage 6,900 mass 3,000 4,000 two and a half thousand four thousand if you keep your units alive especially powerful units like T2 Navy eventually I mean as he's kept his units alive not committed them to fights that they're he's going to lose them in just uses the range, keeps them alive, and Ajax, Ajax's numbers have been kept very low thanks to those huge torpedo bombing runs. And look at that, we have more torpedo bombers building up, and maybe we will see eventually the final naval crush that can win the game for Bladir. I think that's what he's building towards. Doesn't look like he's aiming for some later game option like oh wait a second that's a nuke sub that's one reason to go for t3 navy did he make a battleship at all no all he made the t3 navy for was this plan b the strategic missile sub and that's now let's see will adrix guess that that is was the plan I don't know if he's spotted t3 Navy well oh that's quite obvious for him though <laughs> oh a mermaid to cover that would be nice but uh, if if he spots this he could actually guess that that's what's happening is a nuke sub 
but it, you can see it would require him to zoom in quite closely. But that is definitely you could you could you could guess from from what you see there that a nuke sub is on the table. But what can he really do about it? He is lacking mass big time. See, trying. Oh, look, he is. He's making his strategic nuke defense, but he has no mass. So much mass being drained. And now the Torp Bombers come in, and we have 71 ASF. Where are Blood Eater's ASF? Well, he has less, actually. But there's five cruisers here, and they could maybe allow him to win the battle of the air. I think Ajax is going to bail. He's killed a lot of the Torp Bombers. No need to risk an air fight over cruisers. And he's pushing back with the Zooies. The Zooies are going to run out fast, though. There's just so many... Salem's laying down fire, they're disappearing at a rate of knots and oh oh well anything you can do I can do better it's T3 land from Ajax now and he's waited until he had a lot of Othams but he has no flak and he has no flak to protect for his T3 gunship he sees the T3 gunship immediately retreats to the water and starts gathering some flax to send across and he, he actually sent his air all the way back to the corner he's quite afraid of uh, retribution for the mass torp bomber murders oh here comes some bricks and we get a t3 land fight in crossfire canal that is not common, not a common sight. And the bricks are now going to retreat to the water. Realizing that they can't fight there versus superior number of Othams. And all the fight that would would achieve here is leaving Reclaim on Ajax's side. Doesn't matter really if you win the fight. Let's say he fights, wins the fight quote unquote and then there's a brick there's one brick left and then the brick tries to do something the brick just gets bombed by two bombers or whatever and then all you've succeeded is leaving several bricks brick wrecks on Ajax aside and also autumn wrecks for him to gather and so that's no win at all the SMD is built but it is not being assisted and Ajax is stalling and when you are stalling Missiles load extremely slowly. So whether that's ACU TML, Billy, SMD, uh, nukes of any kind, whether it's battleship, static launchers, uh, um, experimental, the YOLO nuke, if you're stalling, it will load extremely slowly. Slower, slower than you would even expect it to fire slower so you really need to assist those things or not stall so the the first nuke of this nuke sub is loaded the SMD is not loaded at all and it won't be in time and even if it was blood ear it's likely gonna nuke somewhere else if he was really scared of that uh, SMD being loaded but he doesn't even even see the SMD so I think this this is going to land right here and look at all the power we have we have an HQ Omni 43 mexes and he has loaded loaded the nuke place it directly on this T3P gen and I think that's going to be game There it goes, Ajax does not like the sound of that. Now he does have T3 ACU, so maybe he should immediately be get a get another P Gen on the go. Where are his P Gens? He has Okay, he has two T3 P Gens back here, and he's actually moving away, afraid that maybe this grid will be taken out. And now we have a lot of Torp bombers coming in going after his Destros and actually his Destros are now to run away they have to go in this direction they're going to be completely separated from his production 
Now he does take out the Torp Bombers, but he is going to lose all of his navy. Or the vast majority of it. And he doesn't really have much... Uh, doesn't really have much hover support anymore. don't see any Enzines. And the main base has been killed. Somehow that has left mass. Interesting. Why has that happened? But anyway, the main base has been killed. Many T3 P gens, many T3 Maxes, and Omni Power HQ. And another nuke is going to be loaded in the not too distant future. We're halfway to the next nuke from that nuke sub. And Ajax is now adding more power, trying to get more power online, trying to get another T3 Air HQ online. But it doesn't look too good for him. And Bladir has the economy advantage now, probably thanks to stalling energy from Ajax mainly. He just does not have the power to run his economy anymore. And also, that is a lot of T3 mexes that Bladir has made. With his naval supremacy, he just felt very comfortable. He was just playing a waiting game. Continued to dominate the navy, but not go for the kill. Knew that the nuke sub was going to be a game ender for him. And that was his goal, just maintain control. Eco, get into a superior economic situation. Uh, control the water and uh, wait for the nuke sub to do what it's gonna do and it has wiped out a base and it's gonna wipe out a second base it's only a matter of time there is no SMD in other bases we have one SMD here which would have protected the main base had it been completed but that's all so this base may go next or maybe this base either way it's gonna hurt a lot and he still has really no recourse to Navy. And he can't even see... He cannot even see the nuke sub to even attempt to torpedo it. He needs an Omni because that nuke sub has stealth. And it's going to be outside Omni range. So he needs T3 Air Scouts and he's only just got his T3 Air HQ back online. And now we have 19 destroyers. Blood Air really needs to... I think it's time to end the game right now. Try to push in here. He's going to have the air advantage, no doubt, at this stage. We have 100 ASF. 97. Oh, only slightly more for Blood Air. And all these Zooey's spamming in are really... They're not achieving much. Unfortunately, still have no idea why this left mass, to be honest. This nuke defense is not actually going to be loaded, but uh, it doesn't really matter too much, I think. Well, maybe he will go for this grid. At the back, there's new HQ and multiple p -gens here. Scouts go overhead, and they may have actually spotted the... The ACU, which was in the water. Is he here? Yes. And he immediately cancelled T3 and started walking. After the scouts went overhead, he's afraid of a snipe. Because although he has stealthy Omni, because they flew directly over him, we'll see his ACU under the water. And he doesn't need T3 so badly that he's going to continue making that upgrade while under possible threat. Now more Torp Bombers come in and I think this is going to be the final push of the Navy after these Torp Bombers do what they will do. Aiming for cruisers first and then in general murder everything in the vicinity. Multiple cruisers got down, there's still one there and actually wow. See how brutal those cruisers are versus uh, 
tar bombers. Although the cruisers died, all the tar bombers got wiped very quickly. There's another group coming, and I think, yeah, really, it's time to time to move in. He has so many destroyers. He could probably come up on land anywhere, potentially. Oh, we have another force being constructed of Yenzines. Don't know what they can achieve. Holy fuck! Look at this. And no, he's gonna he's gonna actually walk into this. So we have a huge spam of T1 PD. And look, when I press Shift, because he just Shift G'd everything, the game is about to crash. So I'm not gonna press Shift anymore. <laughs> Get this. Okay, I'll stop. That is a huge, huge army of 19 Othams. And he's, and this is like the most heavily defended thing in the map. Just PDs everywhere. And he's going to walk into it. And that's really not going to end well. Blood Air, meanwhile, has finished a Monkey Lord in the middle and is planning many more. And his navy is finally moving in and crushing the production. And there's going to be mass casualties. There already has been a genocide of Zooey's. And that will continue. There's even a brick under here. Just hanging around. <laughs> providing its tiny DPS torpedoes. And actually, oh my goodness. We even have bricks here to help versus the... Uh, the T3 land uh, to help out these T1 PDs and there's even four T3 gunships on standby two support factories making bricks so no hope for the the uh, for this land push here and you can see already many of the Othams have been killed and the nuke is planned for right over here is this SMD gonna load well it's not being assisted my guess is a no I think Ajax is stalling most likely he's still producing T2 Navy until uh, now and here comes a push again these walls just tiny tiny gaps that everything is trying to fit through so they come through in tiny single file in a wave and uh, they're getting murdered by bricks here comes another nuke the SMD is not loaded it's gonna wipe out all of the T3 power here and the air HQ and on the other side again walls and bricks will mean there is nothing to be done now they actually get past this initial choke point the T3 land. They've taken massive casualties already. And uh, there's not that much flak so far. We can see maybe three of them. There goes the entire air grid and power grid for Ajux. Surely signaling the end of the game now. And the Autumns run into another gigantic line of T1 PD which will annihilate them sadly oh yep that's it all the Altums are dead now there's oh one HP Altham still lives and there he goes and that's it surely and now we have an air fight just to just to end the game might as well fight air see what your see what your air micro is like blood air definitely has more now and blood air's air micro honestly leaves leaves a bit to be uh, desired <laughs> oh my goodness Ajax is gonna destroy him here in this air fight very nice <laughs> very nice uh, air fight at the end from Ajax has to be said Bloodir, it's definitely something he could uh, he could work on. 
but this game is well without an air HQ we can't actually make any units to even attempt a snipe right now so it seems doubtful that he will be continuing and he calls GG that is it excellent game there on Crossfire Canal very well played both of these players especially of course Bloodier the winner and he uh, I think it really was well we had some it was quite even I think Ajax was uh, ahead in many many ways but maybe had uh, Bloodier had some some superior uh, attacks on Ajax's side and Ajax some of his attacks especially in here were quite uh, quite painful he went through the meat grinder a couple of times on the other side did some damage but left probably more mass than uh, he did in terms of damage but the main thing was the navy the air the t3 air helping out Bloodier's navy with a huge number of tor bombers which kept Ajax low on navy very low couldn't get out cruisers couldn't get out didn't have enough destroyers to ever take back control and uh, ultimately I think that control is what led Bloodier to win the game Ajax could never really win the navy or even push back out of this single channel after the the early fight there was an early fight where Ajax pushed out and actually bloodier when he went to to navy he'd only made one death row and then was making frigates whether that was by design or by accident that's what happened and Ajax had a better navy pushed out forced bloodier to fall back he made a bit of a miss micro went in too close and Ajax pushed him all the way back to his production where he defended and at that point Ajax then wanted to push with uh, or maybe this was slightly later he wanted to push with maybe 10 destroyers and a lot of gunships and kill the navy of Bloodier but at that time 15 or 20 ASF came out for Bloodier that uh, Ajax was definitely not expecting cleaned up all of the gunships without them doing pretty much anything and then at that point Ajax had to run away retreat all the way back because he knew the Torp bombers were coming and they were and uh, that was quite a nasty turning point for Ajax I think those gunships were a long time in the making and did virtually nothing and then with that air advantage that Bloodier had he uh, destroyed a lot of navy and uh, Ajax could never get back into it so well played very well played Bloodier who was behind in, in uh, economy for pretty much the entire game you see even at the end he's only 20k mass ahead and he was quite dominant at the end had already ki he killed multiple bases with a nuke and still only 20k mass ahead in total so you can see he, had, he worked with a lot less mass throughout the game and won it out in the end so well played it's a great game and uh, this was 2-0 in this first best of three that means there's going to be another best of three to decide who will win the Masters Cup hosted by Mountain and I uh, hope you'll tune in soon to see what happens or what happened and I hope you enjoyed this cast so I'll see you next time